and I don't know, my own inspiration. So um, today we'll, we dive into day four for our, our consecration. I'm excited because uh, at the end of this prayer, of these different prayers of consecration, um, I've asked someone to give a, a witness to their own Marian consecration, their own relationship with Mary. And so I'm excited for Lisa Bonato to to share a little bit of her own relationship with all of us that I think is really helpful and important for us just to not allow this to be just on the abstract, but even um, enfleshed and integrated in, in someone else's life. So just looking forward uh, to that. So let's, let's dive in and let's pray, starting first with our, our prayer for the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful. And they on them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they will be created. And they shall the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who instructs the hearts of your faithful with the light of your Holy Spirit, Make us responsive to his inspirations so that we may be truly wise and even rejoice in his consolations. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Day four, De Montfort's Consecration, part two. Yesterday, I said that St. Louis gives two special emphases in his teaching on Marian consecration. First, a renewal of our baptismal vows, and second, a particularly intimate gift of ourselves to Mary. We covered the first emphasis yesterday. Now let's look at the second, beginning by asking the question, why should we give ourselves to Mary? We should give ourselves to Mary in imitation of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. After all, didn't Jesus give himself to Mary from the moment of the Incarnation? Yes, he did. And aren't we called to imitate Christ? Yes, we are. But, it isn't Ma but isn't Mary a creature? Yes, but she's unique. Not only is Mary free from sin and totally conformed to God's will, but by God's will and good pleasure, as we learned from the introduction, Mary has a special role in our sanctification. Therefore, we should give ourselves to the mother of God so she can help form us into saints, into other Christs. We should give her our yes. But St. Louis takes all of this a step further. His yes to Mary is particularly deep, a profoundly intimate gift of himself to Mary. This devotion consists, then, in giving ourselves entirely to Our Lady in order to belong entirely to Jesus through her. We must give her First, our body, with all its senses and its members. Second, our soul, with all its powers. Third, our exterior goods of fortune, whether present or to come. Fourth, our interior and spiritual goods, which are our merits and our virtues, and our good works, past, present, and future. This for fourth point is most interesting. By this aspect of our consecration to Mary, according to St. Louis, our gift of self to her goes even beyond what is required when people offer themselves to God through religious vows. For instance, by virtue of the vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience, a religious sister does not give God the right to dispose of the grace of all her good works, nor does she give up her merits. Allow me to bring into better focus just how radical a gift of oneself this Marian consecration really is. First, in regard to others, if we give Mary the right to dispose of the graces of our good works, then this means we cannot unconditionally apply such graces to whomever we choose. So, for instance, if I make such an offering to Mary, I cannot insist that the graces from a sickness I am offering up go to the person I want them applied to. Second, in regard to ourselves, if we consecrate ourselves to Mary, then when we die, we won't get to appear before God clothed with the merits of our prayers and good works. In fact, we'll have to appear before God with empty hands, because we will have given all our merits to Mary. 
If the radical nature of this offering has got you worried, don't be worried. Tomorrow we'll see why this offering is not to be feared, and in fact, why it's incredibly beautiful and completely worth it. Until then, we can reflect on the second part of de Montfort's formula for Marian consecration, which speaks of this intimate gift of ourselves to Mary. In the presence of all the heavenly court, I choose you this day for my mother and queen. I deliver and consecrate to you as your slave, my body and soul, my goods, both interior and exterior, and even the value of all my good actions, past, present, and future, leaving to you the entire and full right of disposing of me and all that belongs to me, without exception, according to your good pleasure, for the greater glory of God in time and eternity. Today's prayer. Come Holy Spirit, living in Mary, help me to give myself entirely to Jesus through Mary. Come Holy Spirit, living in Mary, help me to give myself entirely to Jesus through Mary. Come Holy Spirit, living in Mary, help me to give myself entirely to Jesus through Mary. So if you're going through this uh, consecration for the first time, I would give you a, a word of encouragement. Uh, don't bail yet. <laughs> like maybe you're reading this and it just got real to you. I mean, that, that was like a sh quick shift from talking about St. Louis and kind of being radical and having a zealous heart to giving Mary the right to all of our prayers. Um, good, good works, past, present, and future. Hang in there, right? Um, I would invite you to continue to, to meditate on this reading and, and also to consider these questions. First, when we consecrate ourselves to Jesus through Mary, when we give everything to her, we deepen our relationship with her, a relationship of child to mother. Are you anxious about letting her make decisions in certain areas of your life? How might you pray, talk to her, about those decisions. So this hits me as a, a really important question, and maybe even more important than the question is kind of uh, your reaction to it, right? Are you anxious about letting letting Mary kind of take take over these different parts of your life? Um, that's a that's a like a legitimate thing. Or is there anxiety? Are you worried? Or is that not clear to you? Be honest. But that second part, like, how might you talk to her about those decisions, right? And I don't know if you realize this, we do this all the time, right? Sometimes in our um, anxiety or different um, situations that we have going on in our lives, we can turn to every single other person, even to ourselves and kind of what's going on and mauling over it and wondering about it. And we're so worried, we're so fearful or not certain, like, what's this look like? How's this going to pan out? And instead, Instead, we can go to every single person or every single thing except for the very person it um, involves, right? So here, like, have you considered, if you're worried about this con consecration, tell Mary, like, Mary, I don't know about this. This is a lot. Mary, what does that mean that you're going to have access to all of these different parts of my life. Mary, I'm not sure if I can really trust you with all this. Mary, I don't even know what this means. And what does Mary say? How does she respond? The second question. The retreat mentions four intimate aspects of our lives that we give to Mary. First, our body. Second, our soul. Third, our exterior goods, present and future. Fourth, our interior and spiritual goods, past, present, and future. Reflect on the idea that our total consecration to Jesus through Mary is in some sense an imitation of her consecration to God. Just in case you think that this Marian consecration takes something away, just invite you to look at uh, the image that I have up here. It's uh, 
one of my favorites. I forget what movie it's from, Mary of Nazareth or, or something like that, where Mary goes and visits her cousin Elizabeth. And it's just a great moment of pure ecstatic joy. And to consider Mary has just said yes to giving all of herself over to God. Everything, right? From her soul to her mind, to her heart, and even to her body. She's given all over to God, right? And she's like, she's the perfect disciple because she witnesses this consecration to God, giving myself totally to him. It takes nothing away, but it makes room for the Holy Spirit to truly dwell and for the living God to even take up flesh within her own body. It's just an important thing for us to, to think about. And uh, I'll say more on this later, but with Father Gately, it, it kind of comes out throughout these next couple of days. So move on. Let's pray this prayer. This Ave Mari Stella, it was one particularly close to St. Louis' heart. So I just invite you to really pray with all your heart. Hail, bright star of ocean, God's own mother blessed, ever sinless virgin, gate of heavenly rest. Taking that sweet outrage, which from thee broke pain, be some firm within us, changing the evil's name. Break the captive's fetters, light on blindness pour, all our ills expelling, every bliss implore. Show thyself a mother who made the word divine, born for us thy infant, hear our prayers to the hum. Virgin all excelling, mildest of the mild, freed from guilt, preserve us, pure and undefiled. Keep our life all spotless, make our way secure, till we find in Jesus joy forevermore. Through the highest heaven, to the Almighty Three, Father, Son, and Spirit, one same glory be. Amen. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. God, the Father of heaven. Have mercy on us. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world. Have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God. Have mercy on us. Holy Mary. Pray for us. Holy Mother of God. Pray for us. Holy Virgin of Virgins. Pray for us. Mother of Christ. Pray for us. Mother of Divine Grace. Pray for us. Mother most pure. Pray for us. Mother most chaste. Pray for us. Mother inviolate. Pray for us. Mother undefiled. Pray for us. Mother most amiable. Pray for us. Mother most admirable. Pray for us. Mother of good counsel. Pray for us. Mother of our creator. Pray for us. Mother of our savior. Pray for us. Virgin most prudent. Pray for us. Virgin most venerable. Pray for us. Virgin most renowned. Pray for us. Virgin most powerful. Pray for us. Virgin most merciful. Pray for us. Virgin most faithful. Pray for us. Mirror of justice. Pray for us. Seat of wisdom. Pray for us. Cause of our joy. Pray for us. Spiritual vessel. Pray for us. Vessel of honor. Pray for us. Singular vessel of devotion. Pray for us. Mystical rose. Pray for us. Tower of David. Pray for us. Tower of ivory. Pray for us. House of gold. Pray for us. Ark of the covenant. Pray for us. Gate of heaven. Pray for us. Morning star. Pray for us. Health of the sick. Pray for us. Refuge of sinners. Pray for us. Comforter of the afflicted. Pray for us. Help of Christians. Pray for us. Queen of angels. Pray for us. Queen of patriarchs. Pray for us. Queen of prophets. Pray for us. Queen of apostles. Pray for us. Queen of martyrs. Pray for us. Queen of confessors. Pray for us. Queen of virgins. Pray for us. Queen of all saints. Pray for us. Queen conceived without original sin. 
Pray for us. Queen assumed into heaven. Pray for us. Queen of the most holy rosary. Pray for us. Queen of families. Pray for us. Queen of peace. Pray for us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Save us, O Lord. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Graciously hear us, O Lord. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. That we may be worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Grant, we beseech you, Lord God, that we, your servants, may rejoice in continual health of mind and body, and by the glorious intercession of Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, may we be delivered from present sorrow to delight in eternal joy, through Christ our Lord. Amen. So at this point, I um, just want to direct your attention to um, someone who has a beautiful witness to share just her own life and her own journey to coming to know and love our blessed mother it's something that i'm excited for for her to share is i really just i don't want this to be theoretical abstract just kind of staying a, like a mental game or it's it's real it's a relationship and i'm just so happy for lisa to to share what the lord's put on her heart of her own experience of of this conversation consecration and relationship with mary so Lisa, have we found you yet and unmuted you? Sounds like no. Lamb said you found her. She's back there. I think I'm here. Hey, Lisa. Thanks so much. Thank you, Father Adam. Well, <laughs> This, um, I first read 33 Days to Morning Glory um, back in 2014. And um, that in a story of how I even became, came to know 33 Days to Morning Glory is, a, is Mary intercession. Um, I, I finished on um, July 16th, 2014. And it wasn't until 2018, four years later, that I facilitated a class, and um, that was on uh, February 11th, um, the Feast of Our Lady of Loretto. It wasn't exactly what I had planned. Of course, I'm a, I, I'm a control freak, and I, <laughs> I like to plan things. And um, so I pondered after that, do I get more Bible study? Do I do evangelization? I was, again, I needed to be in control and I needed to plan things out. So I pondered and it wasn't until September 11th of that year that I got my answer. What I, and we're still, we're still in that September 11th mode kind of. My husband and I became foster parents and it wasn't anything on my radar at all. We, we were planning retirement and we never had any children. And we had a ch child come to us in three days time of saying yes. <laughs> Sorry, this is, um, it's very dear to my heart. Mary was working in my heart as I was pondering. I had no idea. Fostering wasn't even in the ballpark. I thought I knew God's will because I thought evangelization, Bible study, parish council was where I should be. That was my will because I enjoyed those things. But that wasn't making me holy or becoming, helping me become a saint. I had to struggle and I'm still struggling with this because this child came into our home with one bag of clothes and one bag of toys, not, not even diapers, <laughs> not even a bed. We, and we've never been parents. And we said yes. So that means no to Bible study, no to <laughs> evangelization, no. So 
I had to focus on this child and I'm still focusing after a year and eight months. We still have him. I don't know how long we're gonna have him. But let me tell you, through the terrible twos, through potty training, through all the family dynamics, Mary was with us and Mary continues to be with us. And I'll give you some examples. There's many, but I pick three out. The first one, we did get a bed for him, his big boy bed. And he was so excited about it. Everyone that came to our home, that includes the CYS people, the foster, the child advocates, the mother, the visitations that we had, he had to show everybody his big boy bed. He was my evangelizer because everybody that went up to his room had to pass a little statue of Mary and he made everybody sit and <laughs> say hi to Mary every time. And, and when he, they left, they had to say goodbye to Mary. This statue became my evangelizer. I didn't even have to do anything. The second was is really profound um and it's through mary he loves dinosaurs and he was playing dinosaurs one day and he saw a crucifix on the wall and he goes jesus and i took the cross down and gave it to him he said oh jesus boo-boos he kissed the side of jesus and his hands and his feet that, that was amazing. But then he took it back, he climbed the steps and I went with him to find out what he was gonna be doing with this cross, this crucifix. He went to the statue of Mary and said, Mary, Jesus, boo-boo, kiss. Um, I, I don't know how, how you can not say Mary's involved here. And just this past Wednesday, three days ago, I was frustrated with him. We were reading a book, getting ready for bed, and he was bouncing off the walls. And I went to, I just stopped reading and said, Mary, please, whatever, give me the grace to, to continue. And continued reading the book that we were reading bouncing off the walls. I closed the book and said, okay, let's say our prayers. And he says, what are we grateful for, mommy? He calls me mommy. And he always says, Jesus and Mary. And I said, but why, why are we grateful for Jesus and Mary? And he never answers me. But tonight, or on Wednesday night, he did. I, I shut the light off. I was just, I just had the end. I was at my end. I was frustrated. And I was ready to walk out the door and he goes, we're grateful because Mary is God's love. He said that. I, and I stopped in my tracks. I said, what did you say? He said, we're grateful because Mary is God's love. It blew me away and all my frustration just washed away. You see, it's... <sighs> It's really Mary and, and giving your, giving all what you have to Mary because she has perfect will. Even though I thought that God wanted me to do evangelization or to do Bible study, that was my will. It, I gave it up. Give it to Mary and she makes it perfect. I could not have had the blessings that I have right now, if it wasn't for this child. And he was nowhere on our radar. And I still we, we still struggle. Um, we love him dearly. And this coronavirus has, has been a, a challenge for us too, because his mom's not allowed to visit. He, mother has not seen her child in over a month. And, that's a struggle for us, but I give it all to Mary. 
That's it. <laughs> Lisa, allow me to give you a round of applause uh, on behalf of everyone. Thank you. Um, beautiful. Again, to see the love of our Blessed Mother coming through you and your words and just your expressions and, and thank you. Do I have your permission to share either of those photos you sent me? Yes. Would that, that be all right? Yeah. I just want to share these real quick. Um, this was, uh, <laughs> this is a story, another Marian story. We, uh, <laughs> this is Queen of Heaven Cemetery. And we were, we were traveling on 19 and he saw this statue and said, Mary, let's stop. And so we stopped and took a picture and he's pointing up to Mary there. And we got in the car and we were driving up and there, I don't know if you, anybody knows Queen of Heaven Cemetery, but there's a lot of Mary <laughs> stones there. <laughs> and um, the one in particular, you can switch to, he, we have no lie about 50 pictures of Mary with him. Every church we go to, he wants to have a picture of Mary. And we went up to this grave. So we went up to the grave. And this is on, he, he touched the side of Jesus. He wants a picture. And he, he, we went to the cemetery and we were just going to drive around. And he goes, no, more Mary, more Mary. He wanted more pictures of Mary. So we have about, this is one of like, 10 pictures we took that day. That's beautiful. Yeah, uh, a Marian miracle, no doubt. <laughs> he just, he eats with Mary. <laughs> I have a picture of that too. <laughs> he sleeps with Mary. It's amazing. And this, this is a, a little boy that is, is unchurched. He, he's not baptized and that's what we're praying for. He doesn't, he, he's, he has never seen the inside of a Catholic church until he came to us. And that was a year and eight months ago. So that's what we're praying for, for his baptism. That's all I have. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks, Lisa. Yeah, I just appreciate you sharing. And um, yeah, not always super easy to um, to share ever, when, especially in, in, to a screen of a lot of different people. But I know it meant a lot to, to us. So thank you. Thanks for sharing your love for the Lord and our Blessed Mother. Um, let's just close in prayer and give thanks to God for, um, for Lisa's witness and just this journey that our Blessed Mother has each and every one of us on. Heavenly Father, we thank you for you've given us a great gift in our Blessed Mother, someone to walk with us, someone to mold us, someone to teach us how to love, how to pray, and how to say yes even more fully to your most perfect will. Just beg you for the outpouring of your Holy Spirit to protect, lead, and guide each and every one of us closer in union with Jesus Christ. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you all. Have a beautiful evening. Look forward to being with you again for the Holy Rosary in day five tomorrow. God bless you. Good night.